is Gospel Radio, uh, Gospel Hour, pardon me. And uh, my name is Ujola Sisi, aka Renova. How are you doing this beautiful Sunday morning? We're so happy to have you join us live right here in our studio, Bros Radio, in the city of Lagos. And of course, it is the power to get to our segment. And this beautiful Sunday, we are talking about Bring Me a New Cruise. And of course, I have right here with me the man of God, Deacon CSU Ayamo. Good morning, sir. Thank you, Ojo. Great again to be with you. Hope you had a great week. Yeah, I did. Thank, Thank you, sir. It's time for the rains. Yes, yes. Wow, it's been a lovely week, actually. Yes, it was. It was. Great. Uh, my pleasure again to be with you. And I'm very happy. I think you should be You're in the land of the living. There are not many that desire to be alive. This day are alive. A lot have died. Some have problems much more than they could chew. And therefore cannot be happy like you and me. Find all reason to be happy. The songwriter says, count your blessings, name them one by one. And you'll be surprised what the Lord has done for you. My pleasure once more to be with you. We have a topic. And the topic is, bring me a new cruise. I would like to quickly read the scripture from where we are taking it off from. And we'll have the time as we usually have in the presence of the Lord, enjoying the refreshing presence of the Holy Spirit. Our Father and our God, we thank you today. We appreciate you for life, for health, for your provisions, too numerous to mention, for your protection. We are aware that death knocks by the corner every day. We are also aware that you have raised a standard that keeps us protected. Once more, we return our glory to you. We do not want to take it for granted. Everyone that is hearing me, everyone that will join in the course of this, our meeting, I present to you afresh for understanding, and I receive unction on behalf of my brethren to minister grace to my hearers. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bring me a new cruise. Second Kings chapter 2, verse 19 to 22. And I read, The men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord seeth, but the water is not and the ground barren. And he said, Bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they brought it to him, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters, and cast the salt in there, and said, Thus says the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren in the land. So the waters were healed unto this day according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Praise the Lord. Now, take down these two points as we make progress. Number one, I hope you know, if you do not know, know it now, that everything that is found in the Old Testament of the Bible is a is a, is a shadow of things we see in the new. Oh. So the new and the old are two sides of the same coin. There is no part of the Bible that is contradictory to the other. Most of the things we see in Old Testament are symbolic and symbol. The problem we have with the Christians of today who are not grounded is that they begin to practice the symbols as if it is the solution itself. There is a solution before. That solution was laid at the foundation of the world. And it, at the appointed time in the New Testament, it was revealed in the New Testament. Therefore, what we are going to hear, what we are going to read, what we are going to understand is symbolic. And I'm taking you to the substance, taking you to the real solution. Praise the Lord. Now, the first word that comes in that scripture is, The men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant, as my Lord see it. Now, you need to get this scripture into context. Elijah 
had just departed. I handed over the mantle to Elisha, the person that, he was, that was understudying him. As soon as Elisha was taken in the cloud by the chariots of fire, because Elisha had asked for the mantle, had asked for double portion of his anointing, he released the mantle and it fell as he was being taken away. And he laid hand on the mantle, being a sign of continuation, a sign of for, do after me, continue where I stopped. And as soon as he did that and faced back to go, there was the Jordan facing him. He remembered that Elijah, Elijah divided the Jordan and used the mantle to smit, smite the Jordan and it divided into two. He found his way. That was supposed to be his first miracle post Elijah. As he was coming, the sons of the prophets who had been accosting him in each city accosted him again because prophets know what's going to happen even though if they don't know how to put it to use. And they told him, your master had just been taken away. He told them, I know about it. And all the things that fall, I don't want to bother you with that. Then he remained in Jericho for a while. And while he was in Jericho, the men of the city came. That's where this started. So we need to get it into context. And said to him, behold, I pray thee, the situation of this city is pleasant. And my, as my Lord see it, but the water is not. The situation of this city is pleasant. Behold. Behold, another word for behold is look. In my native language, it will say le. The Yoruba man will say wo, wo. Yes. And what does it really mean? Can I say look and hide myself? No, no, it cannot be. Anybody who says look at me is trying to show something to the person he told. And the men of the city were not ready to hide anything. They said, look, behold, behold. Nobody ever says, look, look at me, and dodges you from seeing him. No, no. If you will come before God also, we are supposed to open up, expose ourselves. Somebody said to me that the corpse can never hide himself from the person who is washing him. Actually, he has no power to hide himself. So first, if you must come before God for solution to your problem, you need to say what the men of the city said. Behold, Lord, see me. I know I have gone wrong. I have done this things wrong. And exactly the Lord himself, even though if you didn't open up, he already has seen. He wanted your part and your contribution to the solution of the problem. Behold. And the other thing that baffled me is, you see that the situation in the city is pleasant. Oh, if you look at, if you come to Lagos Island tomorrow, Monday, or any working day, you will see everybody kitted in their suits, in their traditional dresses, walking, going. Everything looks pleasant. But right inside everybody walking around, his own problem, if you open it up to you, you will hide your own. So everybody has the same thing. Behold, you see how beautiful I'm looking. But if I tell you my own problem, you will marvel, you know, you will marvel and say, ah, I didn't know you are carrying this much of problem. You will hide your own. Behold, the situation of the city is pleasant. But the water is not. And therefore the land is barren. Now what the men of the city have done is diagnosis of the problem. They have diagnosed the problem. And in medical science, if you can diagnose a problem, you have solved it more than 50%. That's why the labs exist. That's why medical laboratory scientists exist. They do the work for the, for the doctor and the pharmacist. I don't know whether you have visited a doctor before, and they say you must go to lab. They take a sample from you, analyze the sample, write down. If there is need to culture and do sensitivity, they will do. And they will tell you that social and so drugs reacted more positively, was able to kill the germs in the laboratory situation. Therefore, these drugs are preferred to this. They give you three stars, four stars, five, five stars, two stars on each of the drugs so that you know which one is more potent to handle the matter. Now, the work of diagnosticians, even in, the, in a profession I belong to, where 
repairing cars is half the job is done halfway the moment you are able to diagnose the problem in the car you're driving you can afford to give instruction to the mechanic and say this is where the problem is now the men of the city said behold and they knew their problem their problem is not how beautiful they are not looking they are looking beautiful it's not how pleasant the city is looking the city was fine it's not how good the women in the city are dressed that's not the issue the sh issue is that right inside them there's something bigger than looking good and that's why they could say the city you can see that this place is beautiful but the land is barren the reason why the land is barren is because the water is not that is the diagnosis of the problem that is the problem itself and the man of god knew what to do he didn't hesitate he didn't waste time he said to them bring me a new cruise by the way that's the title of our message today bring me a new cruise and i said to myself number one why new cruise why do you need a new cruise man of god couldn't you have brought any boy couldn't you have brought a cruise that is dented with oil and a little dirty here and there a new cruise is not contaminated a new cruise is clean so that you don't contaminate the substance when you bring it Jesus was without blemish. That's a new cruise. He had no blame of any form. In the Old Testament, the animals that are used for sacrifice are not supposed to be with one eye. The legs are not supposed to break. There's not supposed to be any kind of blemish on them. So a new cruise represents that. And then the next thing he said, put salt into it. And I say salt, why salt? Like I told us in the beginning, everything in the Old Testament is a symbol, is a shadow of the new. Now, the Bible says in, 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 in the New Testament, Matthew chapter 5, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. Who was the Bible referring to? The Christians. Ye are the salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. Praise the Lord. Now, what is salt there? Now, number one, salt is a seasoning. Women know better what I mean. And of course, everybody that eats knows. If you want to know how important salt is to food as per test, cook your soup with every ingredient that you can imagine. When you finish cooking, please don't add salt first. Try to eat it. You discover that you will not eat it. You will not enjoy it. But drop salt into it and turn it. The test comes out. That's a seasoning. Christians are a source of seasoning. Symbolically, they add tests to living. That Christians are still on this earth is why nothing has happened that is too adverse. So the prayer of Christians keep every city on. Bring me a new cruise, add salt to it. And I just told us that salt is a seasoning. Number two, salt is a preservative. Salt is a preservative. Now, we use salt to preserve things that are decaying, that are spoiling. Many years ago, during the Nigerian Civil War, young boy I was, they used to bring us fish that was salted. For us then, it was like giving us salt that was a scarce commodity plus fish, the protein that we needed. But much later in life, I realized why they were doing that. When I got into the business of trawling and fishing, I discovered that in the high sea, your refrigeration could fail. And when it does, the only way out to preserve the, your catch, your fish, is to immerse your fish into salt solution get a bag of salt, put it into a big bowl, and then take those fish that you have gotten because the refrigerator has failed. The refrigeration system in the fish, in the ship had failed. When you immerse them, you bring them out. They remain without spoiling for the period of your trawling till you come out. Now, what did salt do? Salt was a preservative. Salt preserved those from decaying. Salt is also an arrest LM agent for rottenness. When something is about to rotten or when it's rotten, if you add salt to it, 
salt also brings it back. Let me share <laughs> a very crude way for you. Thank God that there are no pit toilets any longer, particularly in the major cities. But I, I met a situation where toilets were pit. There are some places that we still have, but majority of places now don't have pit toilet. If your pit toilet is full, and you don't want to call the Abuebo, the people who come to carry the, the, the dirty yes, remains. The, the, what you need to do is to get a bag of salt, empty it into that pit toilet. By the next morning when you come, it will be water. The rottenness has gone. So salt is also used to treat rottenness. Salt is important. Now, you are told that we are the salt of the earth. What does it they mean? It means that if Christians are in the city, the salt which they represent, which they are, that city will not be barren. That city will not suffer what Jericho suffered. Now, the next thing that touched me was he took the cruise and the salt, did not just pour it at the water site. He moved to the spring of the water, to the source of the water, which happens to be the source of the problem, and poured the salt at the very beginning of it. And then he carried the salt solution down the line. Why did he not put it midstream? Why did he choose to go down to the beginning of and the source of the water for the city? You see, if you must solve your problem permanently, you must have to go to the source of the problem. What is the source of this problem? If you keep hiding from the source, you will not solve it. I will share one or two testimonies with you about something that happened. I may have to mention names so I can give credit to who is due. Many years ago, I visited, had reason to visit Bishop Iloputi First Church, Victory, somewhere in Satellite Town. And I had a meeting with a man of God who happens to be his lieutenant. I think he had died at that time. His name is Reverend Yerifu. He may be listening to me, he may hear this testimony. So I give credit to him. We were discussing about something and then a young lady passed by and he said, because what we are talking about has to do with barrenness and the fact that none shall be barren in the land according to the Bible. He said to me that part of the problem is that some of us are not opening up to the source of our problem, the spring from where the problem started. If we will and confess it, the Lord is able to heal. Now, a sister passed by. I didn't have to talk with the sister, but I saw her. And he said, that sister by that corner there, I said yes. It's a very faithful sister. She is such a, a dependent hand in the church. And she has a good job. Somebody and many people had come to, to marry her as a spinster. And she would not agree. And they were watching. Some of them would come to confide in them as pastors. I went to sister so and so. She rejected me. What is the reason? Age is not on her side. It's, and she has a good job. So could, what could have happened? They hardly intervened in such occasion, but they had to intervene. He himself said he intervened and called the sister. And the sister came. I said, if you don't mind, would you speak with me? I'm your pastor. He said, yes, sir. He said, I want to talk something with you. I have had reports of two boys, two men, rather, who came and approached you for marriage and you refused. What's the reason? Are you waiting for somebody? The lady started sobbing and crying and later on cleared herself and said, Pastor, the truth is, as a young girl about town, I messed my life up. In one of such occasions, I needed to abort a baby I took in legitimately and the baby died in my womb and dissected them. The, the baby was eventually evacuated 
because it had rotten inside. They needed to evacuate my womb along to keep my life. But I was also told that you, are not, you don't have a chance of having a baby. So if you marry, consider adoption. She took her fed like that. Shortly after that, she got born again and kept her life. Continued to walk in the fed and continued with her life. And she said she didn't want to bring unhappiness to any family, agreeing to go to marry a person and get back there. They don't have a child and problem starts. That is better for her to remain a spinster because that's her fate, what she met in the place of unbelief. It touched the Reverend, the Reverend Minister who was talking to him and then prayed with her. I said, I love the way you handle it. Um, I will call you again. He now called the young man who reported this last time and said, this is confidential, but I need to tell you so that you know what to do. This is what she told me is left for you. The young man went and prayed and came back days later and said, God said, it's my wife. He said, I want you to know, not tomorrow you throw her out of the house on account of not getting a baby. She had opened her. She went to the source of the problem. She didn't put me stream. That's exactly where I'm coming from. And went, the lady was brought in. Said, okay, we'll marry. And they married. It did not take two years. According to the testimony of Reverend Yerifo, the lady took in. Don't ask me where the baby was embedded, whether it's in the large intestine or small intestine, or was hanging on the walls. There was no womb. No. Wherever the baby was hanging is not important to me. But the truth is, God who created can recreate. I work on cars. I have a, a, a unit that does cars. I can't imagine that I take my Toyota car to Toyota factory and they say we don't have parts for this young motor. It can't be done. So if the maker indeed is God, there is no part of the body that God cannot manufacture for your purpose. And there are parts in the house of a manufacturer. I think God planted it and the baby survived and they delivered their baby normal. Now what is the issue? They went to the source of the problem. Nobody means words. The lady said, behold, this is my problem. And God in his mercies visited her. Today we, we share this testimony proudly. But of course, let me tell you also that some of the consequences of things we do in unbelief don't always come this way. This is a special case. A grace granted to a daughter of Zion in a very special way. And we have so many of such things going on. Went to the source and the spring of the problem. That was where he went to pour the salt. And then it came down and continued. That was the solution to the problem. I don't know what you're passing through. Maybe the problem you have is that you have hidden from people, particularly God and people who ought to know, where the rain started beating you. If you will but go to the spring of the problem like the people did unto Elijah, unto Elisha. Elisha will know the solution. I want to let you know that the solution in question is actually the Christian character. In a city where there are a good number of Christians who are praying for the city, there should be no barrenness. I want to also stress that the origin of this problem with Jordan, oh sorry, with Jericho, must be from Joshua chapter 6 where the city was cursed. So for everything that happens, there is a reason. It doesn't just happen. <coughs> Praise the Lord. It doesn't just yeah. happen. Everything that happens, there is a reason. Now, I'll tell you another story. I'll give credit to whom is due also. Barisemeka Wampa, many years ago, visited a, 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 a country called Guatemala. Guatemala is like, like an annex of the United States. Guatemala received the revival lately at that time. And in the revival, many prisons were closed because there were simply no criminals. Pr prisons were built for criminals. And many people got born again. It was like revival fire on the whole nation. And things turned around. 
Maker Wamba, you may be listening to me, or maybe this will come to you later. You told us a story of how you saw carrots harvested from the land that were as big as yam. Mm. One carrot. And a picture of plantain that is almost as tall as a human being. Plantain wow. like let. Wow. What happened actually, that place became modern day Eden, Eden before it was cursed. Most of the things that happen in the land is because the land is caused on account of the inhabitants of the land. If you remember, in the beginning, the land was fruitful. If you remember that because of the sin of Adam and Eve, God caused the land, caused the woman, caused everything that was in it. One of the things God said was, you will labor over this land before you eat. In short, it will bring you thistles and thorns. That's a cause. But this land could receive a, re a reversal of the cause, which is a blessing. If only and only the inhabitants of the land for whose purpose it was caused will listen to the Lord, come before the Lord and say, behold, look at us. Look at us. We have done evil. Remember the Bible says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and seek my face and pray, I will bless the land. I will heal the land. That's the word of God. That God, that word remains true. That word cannot be controverted. Now, the people of Jericho knew very well what their problem was. Do you know your problem? Do you know your problem? You know, there was a time in this land that land delivery or land deliverance, I don't know what to call it, was the end thing. You know, people will go and bring prayer contractors. That's what I call them. And then they will come to the place and pray over the land and pour olive oil on the land. That's symbolic. Olive oil, oil actually was supposed to be symbolic of the Holy Spirit. We don't do those things. You know, somebody will do things that are symbolic, things that are shadow when the substance has come. It's like my getting a cow and sacrificing the cow for my sin or the sin of my children. Why should anybody do that? When the lamb that was shed on the cross of Calvary was shed for me, do I still need to go and kill goats? No. That is the problem of the day. People are not able to know that there is a substance, there is a shadow, there is a symbol, there is the main thing. And Elisha simply introduced the city to the men who would later inhabit the city as a solution of their problem. And as a Christian man, salt of the earth, that's what we are. And if you are salt of the earth, you must hold forth on account of what you are. And today is my pleasure, wherever you are and you're listening to me, that this message of the Bible remains true. I have given you recent example. I have given you an example according to the Bible. So you don't have a reason to doubt. But above all, even the human man, you and me, who are children of God ought to know that the solution to the many problems we face is that we have not become the salt. If you are the salt, you should be able to stand forth for your family. When I became born again many years ago, I stood for my family. I presented every person. I became the priest of the family, the immediate family. And again, thank God that a lot of my other siblings joined in the thing. The land that we inherited from our parents, our great-grandparents, was an accursed land. Because every land that does not recognize the God of Israel as the God and creator is cursed. My great-grandfathers were not Christians. And they did terrible things, even though innocently, that it is. They didn't know, they thought they were, they were worshiping the true God and ended up uh, you know, insulting the true God, if you permit my expression. And at the end of the day, we are his children. He visits the sin of the fathers to the fourth generation of them that hate him. That's what the Bible says. But if you become a child of God, you have started a new bloodline, different from the bloodline of your parents. The blood that runs in my vein is the blood of Jesus Christ. He is my senior brother. What I expect you to do is to give your life to Jesus even as I'm concluding. Bring me a new cruise. Put salt into it. 
and he went to the spring of the waters, the beginning of their problem, and didn't go midstream. Don't hesitate. Do not hide any longer. Anybody that says, behold, is not expected to hide again. Anybody that says in Igbo, le, le num, see me. This is all I am. This is all I have. This is all I have done. Forgive me. Just like the young lady that I, I gave you his test, her testimony did. God, God will forgive. He does not forgive, forget a contrite heart and a broken spirit. It does not matter what you do. I mean, it does not matter. One of these days, I'll bring you a testimony of a young man. Maybe bring him to the studio for you to hear him, who had done everything called iniquity, an armed robber. But today, as I speak to you, he is in a Bible school, ready to be a pastor. If he tells you his story, you, you chuckle and say, people really did this. But the Lord is merciful. There is no sin, no matter how big, that the Lord cannot forgive. The issue is number one. Are you ready to say, look at me, behold. Are you ready to go to the source of your problem and explain it? Are you ready to stop hiding? Are you ready to put in salt? Let me also assure you that salt, even as you use it to treat wound, had never been pleasant. But that may be the surgical operation you need. In the olden days, before the advent of sterilizing equipments and sterilizers, if they treat somebody, if they want to treat somebody who had wound, they wash and wash the surface till it becomes bloody, begins to show red. Then they will mix salt solution and use it to wash it. You need to see where they are treating them. The person will shout to high heavens. That's the issue. What I'm providing to you as a solution will be difficult to do. If I tell you it's easy, it's a lie. I am an example. I got married as an unbeliever. And in spite of my having my wife in the house, I was about town. And in the process of it, so many things happened that I will not be able to say on the, on, the, on the television. But some of them were against my wife. The day I gave my life to Christ, the Holy Spirit said to me, you can't hide. You must have to tell her. The sin you committed were between you and God and between you and your wife. You have made peace with God. God has no problem with you any longer, but you can't keep it. I woke my wife up one early morning. I sized her mood, made sure that I could contain her mood, and I told her a few things. I won't forget that morning. It was difficult for me to even say, and even more difficult for her to take in, but she did, because she had assured me. Before I spoke to her, I told her, would you forgive me if I tell you? She said, yes, and I did. But do you know that that is what has kept that relationship, and God honored it. Today, I have nothing. You can see through me. I mean, through me, there's nothing to hide. That could be the source of my problem then. And I went to the very source of it and put it down. And the Lord cleansed. The source is important. We don't cure midstream. Any curing of any disease or any problem midstream is like taking Panadol when you have malaria. It could stop the headache and stop the fever. But the real cause, which is the malaria parasite or whatever that is in you that is causing the malaria, will linger for a long period if it doesn't kill you. So my solution to you, my pleading to you is quit hiding those things that you know are the problem. You have a baby outside the house, possibly, and you have kept it away from your wife, and you are still cohabitating. Please call that woman solve the problem once and for all let nobody hang you on the balance and keep extorting some things from you on account that you, you, you don't want to go to the source of your problem praise the Lord now my privilege to pray for two sets of people number one that person who is ready to go to the source of his problem and solve it once and for all I want to pray that the person you are going to will accept you and the Lord himself will do Number two, I pray for you if you want to give your life to Jesus because that's the solution to all. You become a salt in the city. You become a salt onto the problem that you are facing. The first person, please put pride your hand on your right hand on your chest. 
you want to confront your problem, not midstream. You want to go to the very source of the problem, but you are afraid of divulging. Young lady, you have been in that marriage for years. You know why you don't have a baby. It is not because God cannot heal. Because of what you did, and you know, and you're keeping it to yourself and making the young the man that you married running around as if you don't know the problem. That's, that's, that's wickedness. You must have to swallow all that you have done before. Plead for God's mercy. You may have found God's mercy, but you need to make peace with that man that you have kept. I want to assure you that God, who is merciful and has abundance of mercy to dispense, will listen to you and grant you that your heart desire. I wouldn't be able to mention all your problems, but I'm sure that you know that what you are brandishing, what you're showing off as your source of problem is not. You are showing me stream. You are not going to the source of the problem. You are not ready to divulge, maybe because you are afraid of the consequences. That's not the way out. Praise the Lord. And I want to pray with you now. Father, thank you for everyone who wants to go to the very source of his problem and to solve that problem. Father, clement weather is what I pray for. That when they go, they will be accepted. Amen. They will be reconciled. You will show mercy. Amen. Because you are God of mercy. You are abundant in mercy. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. If you have need for counsel, you want us to talk to you about this. We are standing by. Reach us through the social handles as shown on the screen. And we will talk to you. We would like to talk to you. We would like to pray with you. Now the second set of people are people who want to give their life to Jesus. And you are here. You want to give your life to Jesus. You become the salt. The solution that Elisha preferred wasn't salt. Oh. Before you go and carry salt and put it into the stream of your, house, of your area and say because Elisha did it. Because that's what people are doing. And then you stay. It wouldn't change anything. It will not change anything because that's not the solution. That was a symbol. That was symbolic. I have told you the substance. The substance is that you must be born again. Oh. When you become born again, you are the salt that needed to touch the beginning of the problem of the city. Put your right hand on your chest again and I'll pray with you. Father, behold my friends who have had these testimonies, including mine. 